Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. Uh, we're going to talk about IDW Publishing. They're losing Ooh. more money. Wow. More money. This is their stock in the last five years. They've lost almost 100% of their value <sighs> in five years. They went from being around, uh, they, they were about $40 a share almost down to about six, 54 cents. Oh. 53 cents. Oh. Yeah, it's not yeah, good. The week low, the fifty-two week low is thirty-six cents. Can you imagine investing anything in this company? No. Can you imagine investing anything. I can't imagine how the choices they make, but that's another story. Uh, it is every quarter now. This this company just bleeds out. They don't know what they're doing. Nobody over there seems to know what they're doing. They keep trying to reorganize. I don't understand at this point how they are still in business. Where the, this magic money is coming from that keeps them afloat. They keep getting. Um, you know, injections of capital. They had a, but a usually guy, injections of capital require some kind of a return on investment. Yes. Where's and the Roy? There's no Roy. There's no, there's nobody steering this ship. Uh, it's headed for an ice. It's it's hit the iceberg. It's, it's hit the iceberg. It's, 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 it's the tip is sticking out. Yeah, there's not much left of IDW. I don't know what the hell is going on here. I mean, any other company at this point would have been shut down or sold off. They were actually calling. The board of directors, if I remember correctly, were calling for this company to be sold off like four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. They're like, like th this is not going to improve. Sell this company. But uh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views. Rants, guys, if you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woo uh, not many woohoos in the uh, the halls of IDW these days. This, this company is... God, what a disaster. So they lost almost all of their license titles. They lost Transformers and, and G.I. Joe, and they're going to Image now. And um, that was kind of what was propping them up, but they don't have a lot of original content either. And they were going to go all in on creator-owned stuff, right? Remember mm -hmm. just a couple months ago? And then they, they pulled the plug on all of it. We were just doing a video. This is just like just the other day we did a video on it. Yeah. Like, oh, we're going to do... We're going to do uh, create our own content, guys. That's the future. And we were joking about that because we're like, back in the day, we actually pitched a, a Shadowbinders reboot to them and, and Crimson Ren, I think. And they're like, yeah, we don't do create our own stuff here. That's not what we do. And anymore. now they're turning around and changing it again. Now they're turning around and changing. Now they're like, so all these people had deals, apparently. And then they found out uh, via the media, I guess, that they no longer had deals. That was Ooh. It was done. And uh, nobody told anybody anything. And look, there That's were not cool that's not cool there were problems with this company now this company is not the same company it was i did some freelance work for them for a couple of years i worked on some of the early disney stuff when they, they got the disney license and uh i don't think any of those people are there anymore well, no another one you worked with after after she blocked you because she after, thought you were, she were your comments gate when you can question marvel that was so left. weird i never had a negative experience you just, with, you just said hey these numbers are bad and she yeah. blocks you yeah, but um, I always had a pleasant working relationship with everybody over there. I had no problem with anybody working there. Uh, the only problem I had, and I've said this before, this is why I kind of knew that they were in the position they're in. They had a hard time paying back in like 2014. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking like you'd have to chase them for like three to six months. And at the time, we had an agent. I had an agent, and he couldn't even get a freaking answer from them. So they were stalling out payments that long ago and then they went all in on like netflix pitches and hulu pitches and they wanted to be a hollywood studio yes i remember that that didn't work that didn't work they had a whole bunch of stuff the only one that got any traction i think at all was lock and I key lock and key yeah but it was never like stranger things level and that's what they're yeah. betting on they're like oh we're gonna turn lock and key into the next stranger things it's like yeah it was good the, the show wasn't that good compared to the comic so it didn't take off. And then they bled all this money out. Uh, everybody that was with the company for years got gone one way or another and uh, moved on to two other things. But uh, every quarter you hear about them losing money. This is, um, let's see, when was this? This was in June. They said that uh, they had a tremendous loss of several million dollars in June in the Q2 report. Now here, fast forward to Q3. And they lost another $1.28 million in a quarter. Sales down. Expenses up. Can't imagine why the sales are down. Now, the weird thing about this, and we're talking, this is just how small the American comic book market is. 
because this is this is nothing compared to like a Hollywood studio or a video right. game company or even some individual YouTubers. Like this is like, yeah, you know, but they're like, oh my god, front page news! IDW lost a, a million dollars. <laughs> well, that's a lot for IDW. For IDW, it is. You know, um, it is. But yeah, this is coming from ICV too. And I gotta give a hat tip to uh, West from Thinking Critical. He covered it yesterday. I, I haven't been paying attention because it's all bad news. I mean, there's no good news you know, this company, but they said they showed a loss of 1.28 million in Q3, the result of lower sales coupled with higher expenses, a difficult combination. Oh shit. Higher expenses where? Um, I don't know. The loss was a big, yeah. Cause we're they're not, not publishing one quarter. We're not talking over a year. No. So one quarter higher expenses. What were the higher expenses? Well, you have to take their word for it. I guess the loss was a big drop off from the $595,000 loss in the year ago quarter. And from the $200,000 loss, the most recent quarter, so how the fuck is this company still in business? Wait, 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 wait. So they've lost 1.28 million in one quarter? Yeah. And then the last quarter they only lost 200,000. Yeah, and then uh last year at this time they lost 500. They are but bleeding I'm just saying out. But they money. went that big of a loss from 200 to 1.28 million in a quarter. It sounds to me like they they kick the can down the that, road. It has to yeah. be. That doesn't make sense. I think they're trying I think they're trying to if I had to guess, and I don't have any inside knowledge, if I had to guess, I think they're probably juggling the books in such a way to make it look like they're not bleeding out as much as they are, as quickly as they are. But losing, you know, their licensed titles, which is their bread and butter, they shut their their tabletop game division down. I'm actually finding a lot of their tabletop games at Ollie's now. Mm-hmm. But their tabletop game division, this is what I don't understand. Their tabletop game division was profitable. Why they? I, I don't know. They're so taking lessons from Disney. They are like, okay, what makes money? Okay, let's not, not do, do that, that. <laughs> and let's uh, let's chase after some other. Oh, we might make money. Yeah, let's not do that. I mean, people are speculating. They're like, is is this a like? Are they trying to lose money? Is there some tax benefit to to bleeding out this way? I, and it's possible because all the decisions they're making seem to be anti marketing, anti good. They they hired uh, one of the milkshake girls. I hesitate to name her, but she's she's in charge now, I guess, of all their one that's the most most well known milkshake, milkshake prime. Are, why would you do that? <laughs> because they, you want to lose money. I mean, I don't understand. Okay, milkshake prime has gone from job to job to job, and each time that milkshake prime shows up at a company, they they go they go down. Yes. Why the hell would you hire milkshake prime? Well, that's why people are like, are they trying to lose money for tax reasons? Because it's like they're sitting there thinking, like, God, we might actually turn a profit this quarter. Quick, hire Milkshake Prime. Call up Milkshake Prime. We Milkshake know she's Prime unemployed. Call when you want your company to fail. <laughs> God, I can't. All right. Uh, so yeah, they said they they uh, had a decline of 1.167 million in book market revenue due to fewer releases in 2023 and smaller decreases in licensing, royalty, and digital sales. Partially offset by a jump of nine hundred thirty-two thousand dollars in direct market revenue from Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles is actually about the only thing they have going for them. Yeah, that's, that's the only one I can think of. Uh, maybe Sonic too. I think Sonic's doing all right. Is this still doing okay? I don't know. I think Sonic is. I think Sonic's a very niche thing. Like Sonic has its diehard fans, but I don't think there's like a ton of them anymore. I think. I mean, there. I'm not saying that they're. I'm just saying that Sonic fans are very, very diehard. And they'll buy anything Sonic. Um, but I don't think that the book is selling gangbusters. I think it's it's still very much... Because a lot of people are like, yeah, has there even been a Sonic game since like 1992? <laughs> a lot of people are like, eh, okay, whatever. Uh, printing costs were up 339000 in the quarter versus the previous year. I, I will actually... I will actually... Uh, agree with that i think because printing costs are up all over the yeah, place they're across the board uh, but that's paper. not that's a drop in the bucket though that is you know i mean comparatively speaking um it did not appear the expenses related to a major downsizing around the end of it yeah they laid up i forgot about that they laid a bunch of people off in april didn't appear to hit the operating statement did, the wait, did they quarter. hire did they hire milkshake prime after the layoffs she i think she was before she was before but and she somehow survived she was not one of the layoffs is that <laughs> recall then they were going to go all in on creator own books now they're not going to um, but let me guess milkshake prime got to pick the books i don't know and they she... were probably ones that weren't going to do shit uh milkshake prime was i believe in charge of the license titles but they're losing licenses and actually there's a lot of buzz around the uh the energon universe that they're starting over at skybound 
which is a G.I. Joe Transformers joint mm -hmm. shared universe, which it sounds good on paper. I, I, this is a controversial take. I know that they've been teaming up Transformers and G.I. Joe for years, but I don't like the idea of Transformers and G.I. Joe existing in the same universe, or at least not like all the time, because Cobra is not a threat when you've got Decepticons, you know, like. I'm not, I'm saying I have no dog in this. People are get, they get pissed at me. They're like, yes, but they did Transformers versus G.I. Joe back at Marvel, like way back when. And they've done, I'm like, yeah, I get that. I get that. But I'm like, think about it. Okay, which is more threatening? You've got a bunch of guys in masks flying jets around, or you've got an army of like sentient jets with laser beams. And like, I just, I think the Decepticons are a much bigger threat. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I don't think G.I. Joe could do much against the Decepticons. You know, that's, well, does Cobra team up with the Decepticons? Probably. Because it doesn't make any sense. They wouldn't. The Decepticons wouldn't team up with them. No, they'd be like your squishy would, little. They would use them. And they would they use would, them. They would destroy them. So yeah, but it just—I don't know. I just think I like GI Joe. I have no dog in this fight. I so like GI Joe, but I'm 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 controversial. This is this is Neon's forte here. This is, and I like both franchises individually, but I like GI Joe when it's more of a uh, realistic, at least grounded take on a near future military conflict. How very dare you! versus like even the cartoon show. I love the cartoon, but it was silly. But the comic book, they at least tried to be somewhat based in reality. And when you throw giant robots into it. Well, now they're just going to start, you know, sending you death threats and make up crap about you on Twitter and stuff. They probably will. That's You're okay. You're literally the devil. I'm literally the devil You're because. You're killing people. I, I like, I like my chocolate and my peanut butter separated because I can't eat peanut butter. So. You can't now. That's true. I, I never thought now. about that, but yes. Yeah, so I can't do. I can't. Oh do man, we used to joke that the, we, we, when we made Shadow Miners, it worked because we combined the chocolate and the peanut butter, and and we made that joke. And now you don't. You can't eat peanut butter now. That's not a euphemism for anything. No, don't, he don't can't. Worry. He legitimately just recently I, developed that he can't eat peanuts. Anyway, I don't know what happened. I got. I got like magically one that was day. Peanuts, not penis. Sometimes when I say peanuts, it sounds like I'm saying penis. That's another conversation. Like he has, a, yeah, I do have a penis allergy. Thank you very much. Uh, thankfully, <laughs> anyway, you don't have back one. To, back to Milkshake Prime and the Milkshake dumbasses. Prime. Let's go. So they said that the, the publishing sales were concentrated in the direct market and book channel and uh, Scholastic was 15%. So that would be uh, book fairs, basically. Mm -hmm. Book fairs are 15% uh, of book sales. Fairs. I used to run those. There were virtually no sales. And their other division, IDW Entertainment, with no ongoing projects, no new options because of the strikes. No, it has nothing to do with the it was strikes. Before the strikes. You guys were dead in the water years before the okay. strikes. Didn't they like kind of like change, kind of did a Disney, and they just like kind of restructured to, to focus all in on on movies and stuff. Yeah. And now they're not getting those. So now they're they were trying to like bring the books back with the creator on. I'm trying to follow this. And then they're 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 deciding not to do that. So we're going on licensing again. And now the licensing isn't working. Is that what basically what you're saying? I, that's what I think is going on. Um, and so they were kind of like before they were willing to sacrifice the comics to chase the Hollywood thing. But yeah, that's what so, I'm saying. So are they pushing around and be like, oh yeah, well because you know the writer strikes, that's why we lost money. Sure, sure it was. So they were doing that, and then they were like, okay, we're gonna get. Um, then they were gonna get creator and back, because then they could make something, and then they 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 kind of screwed those people over to go after more IP, and now that's not working. It just yeah. seems like a big clusterfuck of epic proportions. Yeah, this is just, it's ridiculous. The whole situation is ridiculous. I do not understand how this company, why this company a still exists. 60 cents a share and being down 36 cents, how is it even a, in business? And, and who would buy it? I mean, that's the thing. Like, they don't have anything of value. That's the thing. Like, Dark Horse, I think it saw the writing on the wall and, and Richardson sold to Embracer Group when they were throwing money around. Now they're laying a bunch of people off, right? But he saw the writing on the wall. He's like, there's no long-term future for us as an independent comic book publisher. Let's take the money and cash out. But they had properties. They had Hellboy and they had, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't have anything. IDW has got nothing. Nothing. Lock and key, 30 days a night. They're all old French. Nobody really cares about. They got nothing. They don't have licenses now. So they're just... I don't understand. I don't understand what their their plan is. There, I don't hear any talk about them trying to sell off what they have. 
I mean, the best thing they can do at this point is just shut the damn thing down. I don't even know. I don't even know how they're still in business. I have no idea. Anyway, are we going to wrap this up? Please do. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.